The question for today is CR neuromodulation effective for tinnitus? So this is the last in a series of eight episodes on electrocuting or otherwise directly altering the electrical current in the brain to help tinnitus. So we needed all those previous episodes to thoroughly understand the logic behind CR neuromodulation for tinnitus. At least I did. So the answer today comes from several sources. The how it works, or at least how it's supposed to work, answer comes from Dr. Egermont out of Calgary and Dr. Toss out of Germany. The, uh, Dr. Egermont has focused a great deal on how the brain changes after sound exposure, while Dr. Toss is really focused on neuromodulation. In fact, he's the main inventor of more than 220 patents on different neuromodulation techniques. So we can call him Dr. Toss, AKA, or also known as Dr. Neuromod. Um, so they wrote a, a review paper. We'll use that today. Uh, it says brain synchrony is the key to tinnitus and that neuromodulation is the answer, or at least a really good answer. So this paper is jam-packed with references to other studies that they build upon. So I'll use those other studies and other other studies and our previous episodes to give you a final answer at the end. So I'll try to simplify it for you, but for the sake of ENTs and audiologists who watch these episodes, I'll try not to leave out any major element. Let's look at a brief explanation of how CR neuromodulation works. Then we'll look at some of the results. So there are several parts. So part one, synchrony. Several episodes ago we showed how um, Dr. Egermont discovered that animals who have had hearing loss due to noise trauma develop spontaneous neuron firing and synchronized neuronal activity. All right, that's part one, synchronization in neurons um, related to tinnitus or, or hearing loss, but probably tinnitus. Part two, network activity changes. Two episodes ago, we found that those with more distress about their tinnitus had more input to the auditory part of their brain from the front and the back parts of their brain, the parts that serve attention, memory, and emotion. Okay, that was part two. There's a network of involvement. Part three, kindling. Kindling, this refers to highly persistent modification of neurons in response to repeated activations. This is typically discussed in a negative sense where the maladaptive synchrony persists. Um, and that's what they believe the tinnitus comes from, that maladaptive synchrony um, taking on a life of its own. But you can think of this kindling like exercise of neurons. Of course, you get more persistent changes if you exercise it several times in a row. In the case of TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which we discussed last episode, um, if you, in the case of TMS, they would do that repetition several days in a row, right? So this is why TMS is always done in a series of sessions now instead of just one. Um, it's for the more persistent benefit. But in this case, kindling is thought of as a negative thing, this activity that feeds itself. All right, that was part three. Part four, anti-kindling or coordinated reset, abbreviated CR. As you might expect here, the concept is to break the persistent negative cycle of neurons causing tinnitus. This was demonstrated very specifically with deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's. They also found that they could make Parkinson's movements worse with the wrong stimulation. It was also demonstrated that TMS could at least momentarily reset the synchrony. This was interpreted to be anti-kindling. Well, maybe. So that was part four the anti-kindling or coordinated reset to break that bad synchrony. All right, part five. There is a bit of theoretical neurology here. The reference study for this part uses theory and some fancy math to say that stimulating the brain via the senses, like touch, sound, light, can effectively accomplish anti-kindling or the coordinated reset. Now this makes sense that you can get to and affect the brain via the peripheral nerves. In fact, I use this effect every day in my functional neurology practice to help people with traumatic brain injury, learning disabilities, and migraine recovery. 
But we must recognize that there's a lot of confounding factors between the peripheral nerve and the brain that, um, that an electrode stuck into the brain wouldn't have to deal with, like with deep brain stimulation where they prove this. All right, that's number five, that peripheral nerve stimulation can alter this synchrony in the brain. All right, part six, instead of applying electrical stimulation bursts to different brain sites, Acoustic Coordinated Reset, or CR, delivers tones of different pitch. In the brain's auditory region, the tissues are arranged by pitch. We talked about that before. Here, this is the uh, cochlea and the auditory cortex, where they're arranged by pitch. So what, certainly, what this certainly does is deliver stimulation to different yet nearby brain sites. All right, part seven, listen to the tones near the perceived tinnitus pitch delivered in random combinations and at different moments in order to separately stimulate different neuron groups and thus desynchronize them, achieving the goal of the anti-kindling or the coordinated reset. Whew, that was a brain full of information. I hope it made it understandable for you. It took me weeks of reading and lots of research to come to an understanding of this myself. Now, what about answering the million dollar question, does it work? The shorter answer is, it seems to work pretty well for some people. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Mark Williams, a well-educated audiologist out of London, published a study of 66 patients in 2015. Now, Dr. Williams is the chief audiologist at the Tinnitus Clinic, a company that specializes in treating tinnitus in the UK, and he's the lead audiologist at Desyncra. Technologies, a company that exclusively sells CR neuromodulation units. So, all participants receive stimulation for four to six hours a day, either continuously or divided into several sessions, for 22 to 26 weeks, so about five months. Unfortunately, there was no control group to compare to in this study, but here are the results. 26% reduction in tinnitus loudness and 32% reduction in tinnitus annoyance. That's pretty typical for a respectable tinnitus therapy. Um, how about another research study without um, someone quite so involved in the uh, sale of these? So finally, Marie Wegner, a researcher out of Denmark, in a study published in February 2017, reviewed all the published studies on acoustic um, coordinated reset neuromodulation. Her conclusion was, quote, the evidence, the available evidence, is insufficient for clinical implementation of acoustic CR neuromodulation. The limited level of evidence suggests that acoustic CR neuromodulation may have a positive effects on tinnitus symptoms. So there you go. That too is my conclusion. Its theory is based on some decent science. The results seem to be pretty good, but the research on the treatment results have been designed in a way that it's not appropriate for drawing real strong conclusions. Oh, and as a final note on the results, the tinnitus sufferers over at um, tinnitustalk.com think it's not such a good therapy and that negative research results were suppressed. See below for all the references about that. So what can we use now from the findings of these studies? Well, I think that acoustic coordinated reset neuromodulation is likely harmless and likely has some benefit for many people, but certainly not at all, even within the restricted population that they, um, they say it's appropriate for. So, but if your tinnitus is related to hearing loss and your tinnitus is between 200 and 10,000 hertz, which most people's is, um, it may be worth a try. If the research gets a little more robust, I've considered a good part of the treatment possibilities. So, future applications. I would lump acoustic CR neuromodulation in with notched music as similar auditory therapies that take five hours per day for a minimum of five months to have their effect. Those who are willing to put in a little more short-term effort for a quicker effect for 30 minutes a day for 30 days, the auditory discrimination therapy approach might be preferable. I'd like to know your thoughts, so please leave a comment or request a review of a particular research study. To stay connected to tinnitus research and therapy applications, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to be notified of new therapies and video postings, click the bell and subscribe to our email newsletter at tinnitussynergy.com. 
Thank you and may God bless you.